been saying for the longest, for over a year, it's been over, I think, roughly a year since I've done a live podcast. I haven't done a live podcast in a long time. Really, about, I think it's been really about, about close to two years. You know, I'm ready to do it. I just haven't put the time in yet. Hopefully, sometime later this week, I can do it. You know, you know, old saying said life happens sometimes, and sometimes I haven't had a chance to do it. This is a number of YouTubers, some YouTubers I follow that, you know, have been on a while because, hey, life takes over what they have to do, you know, and they don't always have time to do YouTube videos. I try to do, I do as many as I can, but the problem is I got so many that's loaded up right now, I haven't had time to even load them up, you know, so I try to edit the ones that, um, because I have a really good one that I just did, uh, couple of days ago and I actually want to load that up as soon as possible. I haven't even had a chance to load that one up yet. Hopefully I'll get to it sooner or later before the, before the subject gets too old. You know. But in any case, uh, I was thinking, man, I think one of the things that carried me into my 57th year here on this planet Earth in this country called America in my uh, current state of Maryland is the fact that uh, I try to be true to myself. And I try to be honest about the things I talk about to people, and I try to, you know, put a smile on people's faces. I, you know, I, I, the one of the things that I did that I didn't do a lot when I was, well, not a whole lot over the years, was I joke around a little bit more. I, I'm, I, I, I have a little bit more of a sense of humor. Now, I've been married going on 30 years in a year, in December, and, uh, I can honestly say ever since I met my, my my wife, I probably have more of a sense of humor now than I ever did before I met her. Real talk. And um, I'm glad that I do. I'm, I'm glad, and I'm also glad the fact that she's the kind of person who understands me. And why I understand her, why we, for the most part, get along very well. My thing is, I think before I, I met her, I was a miserable wreck. I really was. And I think uh, ever since then, I've, I've actually improved on everything I've done in terms of a lot of things I've improved on. It motivated me. It, it sounds kind of weird that I'm saying, but it did. It mo motivated me to do better as a person, as a man. You gotta have the motivation behind you, man. Nothing wrong with that. It makes you better. You know, I actually stopped eating a lot of red meat because I met her. I, not that I don't eat red meat, I just don't eat a lot of it. I cut a lot of that out. You know, over here. try to improve on being more cordial with people. I, I think I've improved. I mean, this, these are the things I'm, I want to talk about that I think improved me, that helped me improve doing the things I'm doing now because I want to do better and I want to be a better person. One of the things I can honestly think that has helped me, it helped me greatly, um, and I can honestly say this, is going back to church. I think it's the one thing that I can honestly say helped me better than anything was going back to church and getting right with God. I think it's made me a, a, a better person. I said, I'm still a work in pro progress and but it made me more 
a little bit more spiritually minded, maybe a little bit more humble. It made me more a little bit more sensitive to when I'm talking to people. I'm, I'm more sensitive about uh, things that, that when I, I I try to have more of a sensitive ear. But some of us, you know, we'll listen to people talking. We just like one ear in, one ear out the other. But I, I, when I say more sensitive ear, that I actually attune to what they're saying and try to under, be more understanding with others when they talk about the plights and all of that. I really do. You know. Because people, you know, don't have a sense of, you know. Uh, some of us don't have a sense of, uh, of trying to be in tune, in tune with anybody, man. Some of us don't. Some of us just don't care. But I try to, I try to do to be a better person on that level, too. I really do. That's something that took me a while to do too. It took me a minute. And I think I'm better at that too. Thank God. You know. I try, you know, to get along better with people. I'm thankful for that. Now, as far as me, certain people I don't talk to anymore, I don't. Uh, and I honestly, I, I, I don't feel bad about it. On some respects, I probably do, but for the most part, I don't. You know, because I know I've been there for the people. I was just listening to somebody on YouTube was saying, uh, you, you're a writer for your friends and your family, and them same people dog you out because they know you're doing good. They know you're doing right. He was just saying that, uh, uh, Black Story on YouTube, just saying that, you know, people will, uh, will hate on you based on you doing right for them. It's weird, but I've been through that, you know, I had to cut certain family and friends off because of that, you know, because sometimes even some of your family and friends will try to take advantage of your kindness for weakness, and at some point you had to cut them off. That's another reason why I think I'm 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 been able to thrive because I feel better by doing that. Because I know I did right for them. And you throw me under the bus for doing right for them, for them as a result. And I'm like, well, then I'm just gonna leave you alone. And I feel so much better not dealing with it. I do. I ain't gonna be concerned about it. You know? I have my own family to deal with. I can't worry about you hating on me. I'm just gonna move on. Sometimes you gotta do that. I've heard, I've had I've had some people on YouTube talk tell me the same thing, and they're right. You know, it's true. Sometimes you, sometimes the, the people the most closest to you can be your worst enemy. This I know for a personal fact, very personal. And it's, it's, it's really a shame. It's really a shame. You know, I don't want it that way. I want to be able to get, I'm the, I'm the kind of person, and, I, and this is me, uh, real talk from my heart, man. I'm the kind of person that wants to get along with everybody. I don't give a damn what part of life you came from. I don't care if you come from the highest of highs or lowest of lows. I'm that kind of person to try to get along with everybody. You know, I've dealt with the highest of highest persons. I dealt with the lowest of lowest persons. I dealt with 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 the, with the upper mobile and the downtrodden of all and from all walks of life. I try to get along with everybody because, to me, when you try to get along with people, you try to understand people, and you try to talk with people, you have a better understanding of who they're about and why you can actually have a common ground with them. Some people aren't like that. Some people in the hood ain't like that. Some people are like, well, you know, if, if, if they ain't, if you ain't where they at, they don't want to talk to you. I've been in that situation too. Or if I try to talk to somebody like that from, you know, for, uh, somebody from the hood or whatever that I know, or somebody who I don't know, you know, try to talk to, man, 
They think that they, 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 they think I'm better than them, and I'm not like that. I'm not like that at all. But by the same token, I ain't the kind of person I'm gonna just let you run over me either. You know, I may look that way, I might appear that way, but on contrary, my friend, <laughs> you don't know me like that. <laughs> Put like that. Just saying. But you got people like that all the time. They can they go they can one up on you based on your kindness and thinking it's a weakness. Not really knowing you got your own. But I just want to thank the Lord today for real. The mighty, mighty Lord. I know some people, who oh, you did really? You know, I'm gonna say this and I'm gonna get off my soapbox here. I accepted uh, Lord Jesus Christ as my Savior. Officially accepted it back in December of 1979. I never forgot that. And you know what? My life has been doing pretty well ever since. I've had, not to say that I haven't had struggles, because I've had struggles. You know, but it's just the fact that I know that it that it, it, it exists. There was a movie called Guys Real Man, and I watched that movie. And I'm telling you right now that that's a powerful film. I highly recommend that. I mean, I, I only remember watching the sequel, but I'm going to watch it again. It was a really good movie. Uh, Kevin Sorbo uh, was starring. It, you know it from uh, Hercules back in the day. And I, um, he's done he's done a number of religious films. I, just, I, I used to have an app. I'm gonna have to get the app back called a Dub, uh, and they actually uh, put out a lot of religious uh, theme based movies, which I love watching. I really do love watching. I, I watched quite a few of them over the years. I'm gonna start back watching them more because it keeps you grounded. See, <laughs> being spiritual keeps you grounded. The business of church is another whole story. Okay, it's about the business of running the church. You know, keeping the lights on, paying the bills, you know, and stuff like that. But being spiritual is something I think we should all kind of have because it keeps you grounded, keeps you honest, keeps you keep your moral uh, stabilities intact. You know? Keeps you stable moral. Let's put it like that. It does. And people say, oh, the Bible full of this and all that. Uh, Bible ain't real. The Bible is very real to me. Now, some of the things that, that, that say happen in the Bible, okay, on some level, even I can question that. But as far as the teachings itself about the do's and don'ts of life, that is 100% real. I don't care what nobody's saying. That's real talk. That is as real as it gets. The lessons in there are so powerful. So powerful. <laughs> you have no idea. It's kept me walking straight on a straight line, a straight path for many, many years after that. It really has. I haven't been perfect, but it kept me kept kept me walking on a straight line, kept me out of trouble. Kept me stable in my marriage for 30 years. 30 years. No one in my family is married more longer than me. I ain't my parents. Okay? Nobody. I'm the only, matter of fact, between me and my, my wife's family, we're the only still married couple between both of our families. And the longest. 30 years. Don't tell me about my hand to do with that. Because it could have very well went south. We've had, and I'll admit it, we've had issues where things actually did go south. I'm not going to front, ladies and gentlemen. We did. Many, many times where I could have just said, I'm not dealing with it no more. And there were a couple of times where I almost did. There were a couple of times I was about to. You know, to a point, I was just going to just go ahead and, you know, get my own place. I had no problem saying that. But no one can ever tell me 
that there's not a single lesson in the Bible that don't teach you right from wrong. No one. Not a preacher, not a teacher, not a politician. Nobody. You can say what you want about uh, Bible, Bible ain't real. Bible is very real. That's why they say God's real. Okay? The Bible is an extension of the Word of God. That's what it is. So the Bible ain't real, God ain't real. <laughs> Bottom line. But God is real. The Bible is real. It's as real as it gets. It doesn't get any realer than that. It just don't. It don't get any realer than the Bible. It simply don't. I'm just saying, I'm just stating hard facts, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. And I don't care what walk of life you come from. That Bible is real. I'm not going to bash anybody about their uh, own beliefs about anything outside of Christianity. Because I won't. But I know what's real in me. I know what I read. You know, it said, yes, Jesus loved me for the Bible tells me so. That explains everything to me. You know, the lessons of the Bible are real. That's why it was written. It was written to keep you morally sane. That's what it was about. That's what it always will be about. I think, to me... It's been the guiding force for me for most of my life and will continue to do so. For the rest of my life. I'm going to make sure of that. You know. I got a book called The Everyday Man's Bible. Uh, one of my uh, fellow church members that I um, that told me about it. I saw a book and I saw it and I, I ordered it on Amazon. I'm gonna have to start back reading. That's my goal to really get back into it anyway, because it, it's it's actually good reading. It's great reading actually. I think it's a good. It's great reading. I remember when I was a teenager when I used to go to uh, church. I'll get that in a second. When I used to go to church, uh, my old church in Cleveland, and. I was so heavy into it, I could actually, no joke, could quote you scriptures verbatim. Or I would quote a scripture based on what somebody, about lessons specifically. I taught Sunday school. This is what I actually did. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get back to doing that anytime soon, because I have been asked to do it. I don't, right now, I haven't really been reading like I should enough to really get into it. There was a lesson I could have done that when I didn't. But I want to really get back into it because, uh, and that's one of the things I do miss about not be physically being in church anymore because we, we were doing a lot of that. And now they're on YouTube too. They have a YouTube channel. Um, both our Sunday school and our church uh, actually have programs directly on YouTube now. And I watch both. And I participate in, in a lot of myself. Uh, through my uh, men's, uh, male chorus of ministry. One of the things I do, I can honestly say, I love singing. I've always loved singing. I loved singing long before I started singing the choir, church choir. I was singing songs from way back. I was singing a gospel tune before I even got to church. So that's nothing new. But it's just the fact that I can honestly say that I do feel good about myself. I feel good about the things that, 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 I, that, I, that I want to do and things I like to do. You know? And like the 
to get into doing more you need a little more things as I get older you know as you get older how do I put it you shouldn't stop doing things you should start motivating yourself to do uh, either role with a little bit more things you know one of the things I like to do is actually uh and this is this is my, my bucket list to do animation. It's, it's something I've been craving and craving and craving to do for years and years, and I still want to do it. I just haven't I, I just haven't had the time to do it. I haven't sat down and really done it. But that's something I'm desperate. I desperately want to do so bad. You know, there's a guy on YouTube, young guy. Um, he, he, he referred himself as uh, Cartoon Connect Brandon, man. That dude's incredible. And I and I give a real shout out to him, man. He created uh, his own series been on YouTube for years called uh, Little Ron Ron. I love this show. I watch it all the time. And I had to give a big shout out to him. He's motivated me to want to get back into animation. Well, well, not get back in it, but get into animation. And uh, he's not even 30 yet. If he ain't already. And he started a series that actually generated, well, uh, roughly a million, million uh, subs, something like that. You know, he's built, he's built, he built his own little empire. You know, that's the kind of thing I would like to do along that line. Um, I haven't really delved into animation. I've done video, uh, videography, and I've done uh, music production. Those two things I have done. Uh, if, you, if you're interested in hearing my music, uh, you can shoot me a note. DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. That's DJ Wolf Live at AOL.com. I got a number of my uh, beats that are directly on SoundCloud right now. On the DJ Wolf AKM. And I actually have some on YouTube on my channel right here for all of your TV. And I also have a music channel called DJ Wolf's Music Box, which I plan on putting more content on there real soon. So, but like I said, those are the things I like to do. Those things keep me youthful, keep me thriving and active. You know. All right, guys. Well, that's all I got. I don't have any much, much anything else at this point. But I will be talking more to you, look, guys, later. I love you. Thank you for watching me all these years. The last what seven, seven years I've been on. Well, consistently since 2014. I've already been on YouTube since 2010, 2008, something like that. Anyway, uh, I got more content coming soon. It's DJ Wolf. I'm out.